In this video, we're going to go through the second approach on how to calculate the limiting reactant or figure out the limiting reactant from stoichiometric calculations. So, um, so the first, the last video, we looked at the first approach, which strictly used the amount of the reactants and compared them in order to figure out which one was going to be consumed first, which one was going to be your limiting reactant. The other way that you can approach this problem is to calculate how much product each reactant is going to form and whichever one would form the lower amount of product is going to be the limiting reactant. So I chose a fairly simple example here. So this problem says the most important commercial process for converting into from the air into nitrogen containing compounds is based on the reaction of N2 and H2 to form ammonia, NH3. So there's your chemical reaction. It's already balanced for you. And it asks how many moles of NH3 can be formed from three moles of N2 and six moles of H2, right? So it's giving you the amounts of both of your reactants in moles, right? So, uh, so this is going to be a fairly simple example. All we want to do is figure out how many moles each one of these reactants would produce of ammonia. And whichever one would produce the least amount of ammonia is going to be the limiting reactant. So we have, we're starting with three moles of N2, right? So we'll write that here. We got three moles of N2. And so we want to use the mole to mole ratio between N2 and ammonia to figure out how much ammonia is going to be produced from this three moles of N2, right? That, that mole to mole ratio is two to one, right? So for every one mole of N2, you've got two moles of ammonia in H3. And so that means that, you know, three times two, six, so it's going to produce six moles of NH3. Right? So from this amount of N2 and this mole to mole ratio, we figure out that we have six moles of, we would produce six moles of NH3. Now, what about the hydrogen, right? So we have six moles of hydrogen, H2. The mole to mole ratio between hydrogen and ammonia is three to two. So that means for every three moles of H2, we have two moles of ammonia in H3. And so that's going to give us four moles of NH3 produced. Right, so now let's look at each one of these. So it, I, just taking this three moles of N2, we will produce six moles of NH3. Just taking this six moles of H2, we'll produce four moles of NH3. So since this H2 would lead to the lower amount of product form, it is going to be the limiting reactant. So H2 is going to be the limiting reactant. Right. Again, we're able to discern that because it is going to produce the lowest amount of product. Right. So you would basically so basically all you're doing here is just calculating using the mole to mole ratio to figure out how much of the product is going to be formed. Whichever one forms the least amount of product is the limiting reactant. And to answer the question, right, it says how many moles of NH3 will be formed? Four moles of NH3 would be formed here. Right. Because that's how much. Uh, is produced from the limiting reactant H2, right? So um, a lot of students prefer this method uh, over the first one. Uh, whichever method is more comfortable for you is fine for me. I prefer the first one pedagogically just because you're only comparing the reactants with one another. But uh, whichever one you feel more comfortable with, I, I tend to think both of them are uh, just as easy to do from a, from a calculation standpoint. But uh, for whichever one is more comfortable for you, go with that one. I've pre presented both of them to you. You choose which one is most comfortable for you.